for two. What's going on, guys? Black Sat Survival. And today I got a, my good friend Eric from Nutrient Survival on today. We're going to talk about a lot of different things um, and primarily about choosing bug out locations, survival retreats, and things like that. But there's a lot stirring in the world. And uh, Eric, tell the folks that's new here that may not know you a little bit about yourself. Right on. Thanks, Jack. I, I always love hanging out with you. Yeah, I do too, uh, on man. This, yeah, on this great afternoon. Um, I'm out here in Reno, Nevada. And we've been uh, friends now. I, I, I think we can say we're friends. Yeah, um, definitely. And, and real ones for a couple of years. But I'm out here. I run a survival food company, emergency food company called Nutrient Survival. Um, I am a former Army Ranger, West Point grad, uh, was in big food for about 20 years. And I finally saw the light doing some of the things that you know, you're into as well, nutrition. And I've been in food for in my entire professional career and I want to do something better for people instead of contributing to the problem. And so that's why I said I'm, I'm breaking free and I'm going out West and I'm going to start this new brand that we call nutrient survival. And it's been, it's been a heck of a ride, a lot of fun. Absolutely, man. Especially the, the fact that your background, you said you've been in the food industry, military army ranger, you know I mean? I think, I think it's a, uh, definitely uh, someone like you is needed in the industry, you know, especially putting nutrition first, that's actually how I even found you guys. I was uh, looking for something that had protein in it because most all of them are just just uh, fluffed up carbohydrates and not even good ones. You know, and that's why I'd, I'd be out, you know, camping and, and hiking and such. And, you know, you just feel depleted, you know, especially when you're eating, you know, you eat fairly healthy um, and you're used to a certain uh intake you know your body gets used to these things and, and man i would i would go out and feel like crap like i wouldn't enjoy my experiences so i switched to you guys when i found out about you guys and uh yeah but you know a lot a lot is stirring in the world you know and let me just say this in the military the only other people that i like other than marines are army rangers <laughs> it's true it's true like when i was in there bending going at jump school man my uh me uh, me and uh, another guy we were the stick leaders and uh, he was Army Ranger, and, and I and I and I got along with all the Army Rangers down there, man. So, right on. Well, I'm, I'm an old school one, okay. So, um, these days it's become a leadership class. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might be old school too now, though. Yeah, we're, we're all old it. school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, man, I don't know if you saw my uh, Speaker Mike Johnson pretty much hand over the reins to the Democrats today. Oh um, no. You know, and 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 I had been saying, I, I actually, I, I knocked him the other day, man. I got a lot of hate for it. They're like, no, uh, Speaker Johnson's great, blah, 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 blah. And turns out, no, man. The thing is, I think he came out of the gate fairly good, but something happened. And and, and, it, and it's probably always money, you know. The thing is, these guys have $100,000, $200,000 salaries. And the next thing you know, they're, they're multimillionaires. You know, you have to question what's really going on. Right. Well, it's always it's always that follow the money. Yeah. Uh, follow follow the power. Right. And th generally speaking, they're all the same. I mean, most of those guys are, are all the same. Yeah. So, it's like Republican, Democrat doesn't even matter anymore. They're all just politicians. So it's, it's right. us, the people and politicians. Right. It's true. The thing I liked about Mike Johnson initially certainly was he really stood up for what he believed in and talked about his faith, you know, it was was just out front and center standing yeah. strong but you know eventually they get to you they get we, to you. we see this happening eventually they get to you and so yeah, you run yeah, down. Yeah. i thought it was good too I, I really did i out of the gate i thought i was like oh this is the guy and then uh yeah man just like everything else you know he he, he flipped and uh you know i i had a i had thought about going into politics and i met with a a, a very well-known one uh and so, and, and there's a backstory to that. A very well-known current politician, a lot of you guys like, um, he re his people reached out to me. Apparently, he watches my channel. This was a few years ago, and and he um, offered to for me to at, run some ads for his. He has some groups he runs, and so I did. And they said, "Man, we would like to get you 
in, in our training, you know, and I, and so I thought, well, I don't want to do that, you know, because they're, they're wanting to talk about me becoming a politician. And I was like, I, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Well, then I started really thinking about it eventually. And I met with a, another well-known, a former politician. He had gotten out of it. And, and a lot of people know who he is. And basically he told me that, and he, he, he got caught with some corruption and he said, all politicians are corrupt. And he said, it's just a fact of the matter. If you go against them at any moment in time, they'll yank the rug out from under you. And then they'll, they'll expose what the corruption is that you do. And even he admitted to being corrupt. He said, cause all of us are, you know, and he said, everybody's bought and paid for it. And he was like, if you become a politician, you will be too. You know, he said either either they'll buy you, and if they can't buy you, they'll blackmail you. Right. So that's whenever I said, you know what, that's probably not the road I want to go down. You know. Well, and that and now they'll destroy you. Yeah. So I mean, and my wife, she's Panamanian. I met her when I was uh, down the canal in Panama for a couple of years, and we've been married thirty years now, and it's an awesome marriage. We love it. But I used to joke with her about what a banana republic. Panama was and the way that they ran their 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 government, their country, their politics, you know, they would go after their political opponents uh, and, and throw them in jail or they would go yeah. beat them up on the street. I mean, you remember this back right during Just Cause. One of the reasons is Noriega was beating the heck out of uh, all his opposition, yes. cutting their heads off, putting in mailbags. OK, but they have an election that happens next week. And I probably said a bad word here with, with <laughs> elections. So there we go. Flag, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I'm talking about Panama. Okay. <laughs> but you've, you've got the opposition going after the, you know, the, the, the incumbent opposition going after the challenger and throwing, guess what, court cases at them. Yeah. And, and preventing him from getting on the ballot because of the litigation. Mm -hmm. and the, sound familiar? Yes. We've yes. become this, Jack. Yes, yes. You know, I used to believe the United States would be the last bastion of true freedom. Yes. And it is going down the tubes. And it's 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 become folly now, one yes. after another. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, man, you you're you're a West Point graduate and and that's very uh, that's incredible. That's an incredible accomplishment. When you're at West Point, as a young man thinking about, and you, you plan on going into the army, becoming an officer, would you have ever imagined our country have, would have went in this direction? Never, never. I was there. I will remember until the day I die, President Reagan visiting us. We rearranged the marching plane so that we could put the snipers up on the mess hall and, and hold, you know, overwatch while President Reagan was on the on the field with the cadets. I remember him walking into the mess hall, and we were, oh man, I'm getting chills right now just remembering it because it was so impactful to me. This was in, uh, I want to say this was in '90 or so. Um, so a second second term, and you know I was in high school when he was first shot, uh, but he got that second term anyway. It was so awesome, Jack, and you didn't care anything about politics. You just wanted to serve your country. You wanted to do what was right. You wanted to defend America, stand up for our values, and that has it's completely flipped on its head. Even probably, probably because back then, though, is that like most politicians, whether they agreed on or disagreed, they all wanted America to be successful. I can't say that about the current administration. I believe that they want their ideology to be successful, not America. And, and whatever that is to retain power, uh, you know, it, because it's beyond money. Money's easily attainable. And, and a lot of people, you know, in times in life, if you told me that, I'd be like, you're a liar. Money is very easily to attain. Um, but power and control is not. You know, if you look at like, man, Jim Jones type stuff, you know, drinking Kool-Aid that was power and control and and con compared to and, and what i'm getting to is like the current climate of the world the the left the they are the most radical they'll say the right is radical the left is extremely radical like that you can't even have a conversation no. with them about anything mm -hmm. because they'll bring it back to donald trump or whatever you know what I mean? It's all the, the, the talking points that they go back to. 
Um, I, I feel like they're extremely radicalized. And it's almost like I talk about uh, quite a bit about how BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street, how they control all these corporations to push certain ideologies, like the LGBT uh, movement, like they have the various things going on. With that, they'll force the corporations to participate, such as Starbucks, Target, and, and the, the larger name companies. You'll see the smaller companies who's not, they don't have any skin in the game, but they'll follow suit too just because right. and i just think it's it's just a very i think we live in very scary times no we 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 do it's 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 horrible i can't imagine trying to make it in this new world mm -hmm. um because of the way that i was raised because of what i believe and you know it's it is you talk about the other side and i welcome civil discourse but all we ever get is yelling screaming mm -hmm. It, you yeah. know, at, at the top of their lungs, it's like, can we, can we talk really? Yeah. I mean, seriously, you know, do some homework and let's, let's sit down and let's have a, let's have a conversation. Right. But no, you've got, uh, kids out on, on the steps of the Columbia university again, you know, protesting yeah. for pro Iranian and pro Palestinian, like really, it, this is what it's come to. You know, I'm all for, uh, demonstrations and, and, and civil, uh, demonstrations, but it's just, it's become you know, my way or the highway, and you can't have a conversation anymore. Yeah, you know, the times that I've even tried to, uh, I guess, debate with leftists, they have no basis for their arguments. <clears throat> There's a, a famous actor that that I'm, he follows me, but he's he's into he's he's a leftist, but he and I he's a he's a lister. Like people know who he is, but I don't say his name because um, I don't want people bothering him, but. He and I got into a debate recently um, about firearms, and I crushed him with statistics. I kept sending him, you know, the various statistics. Totally crushed him. And he said, well, I just, I think it would be better. The problem is this thinking or, or what you, you know, opinion over fact. You know, they, they say facts over, over feelings. But the, the problem is they deal in feelings and not facts. And most of these feelings are you know, narratives that are, that have no basis. They're just, right. they're just political agendas. And, and a lot of people fall for it. They're pawns for the, the system. Really are. And, and part of the issue too, is the platforms to have conversations are, are being snuffed out for, for the, for the conversation that makes sense. Yeah. Right? Uh, and, and so how do you win a conversation? Oh, yeah. Well, you, you shut down all the voices that are dissenters. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's happening, right? And so now it's just this, again, echo chamber that they hope swirls into a hurricane and get everybody drinking the Kool-Aid and believing in, in, in something that's not real based on feeling or based on uh, anything but the truth. Yeah, and, and the, the, the issue came, I think, you know, 2020, mainstream media realized that they are not the force to be reckoned with. Social media is the true media. The problem is, is, is folks out there, you know, you have influencing influencers and content creators that grow a large following and, and these following, you know, the, the following, they're people that are seeking truth. The, these, these subscribers, followers, whatever, whatever platform they're on Instagram, YouTube, what have you, they're seeking truth. So you have all these truth tellers out there now competing against mainstream media that's nobody's watching what do you what, now they realize well we got to shut it down and I, I would say that's probably the biggest conservative mistake yeah. and i was reaching out to my uh congressman during this time because i was like look this is the most important issue is you have to protect free speech on social media you have to because that is the only way we're going to succeed because there is no free speech that, that's, CNN, that's right. Fox News, and every every one of those are owned by the same people. Mm -hmm. Whether the, the the Bilderberg Group, I think it is, um, they're all they're all under 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 the umbrella of the same. That's why Tucker Carlson got fired, you know, and <clears throat> these sort of things because they're all fault. Regardless, people like Fox News is conservative news. It's really not. Mm -hmm. If you if you watch it for longer, and most people I think realize this, Tucker Carlson is probably the only conservative. Uh, anchor they had on there 
But if you look at it, they're all owned by the same people. So throughout the day, people think, oh, well, Fox News is good, and they're watching it. Well, then they hear the propaganda, because that's what it is. You know, people refer back to Operation Mockingbird. These things happen. This is not some made-up fantasy. This is truth. The American government has done these things. Well, Jack, we saw this. That is the beautiful thing about social media when it was first born, that it was a free, open place to, to be able to express your ideas, to communicate with others without uh, an intermediary, without having to go through somebody else's filter. I mean, you had one-on-one -on -one direct comms with others and thousands and millions potentially. But what did we see happen? We saw the companies become infiltrated with our government and begin suppressing uh, the messaging and, and you know the health crises. That was the prime example of this. And we, we know this to be true now, right? And we knew it at the time, but we didn't have any evidence. But now we know it, it to be 100% true. Until you get a guy like, okay, and, and for all his flaws, Elon Musk set Twitter yep. free. Yes. God yeah. bless him. Yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing. Look, Elon, I'm not worshiping any man, okay, number one. Jesus Christ is it, and, you know. But a lot of people think, well, if you can't support someone 100%, you shouldn't support them all. Elon Musk has, I mean, for the most part, I've said some crazy things on X that I would be definitely banned on any other platform for. No issues. At least he has that going for him and he's doing something about it, you know, but a lot of people, they, and, and we, we talked about this before the show where these other platforms, they say they're free speech platforms, but are they really free speech platforms? No. You know, they're not. It's an echo chamber. You're sitting in, in a room by yourself talking, you know, I love social media and I love doing live videos. I love it because man, I used, I mean, for years I filmed <laughs> talking to a camera, my cameraman and it. It's just awesome that I can see comments here of people watching and I can interact. It's, it's an amazing yeah. thing. I, I think that, I think that's the strength of, of live streaming and, and streaming in general and why I think a lot of people are moving towards it because it builds a greater community, you know. And I will say this too, I'll, I'll, even the, the Hollywood celebrities, you know, who were the mouthpieces for the left, who, who were the original influencers. I noticed years ago, I was at a, a convention and this was before, long time ago i was at a convention and there was a a tv guy uh he, he was on a show and he was at a, he, we had a table he had a table more people were coming up to us you know than, than him and i asked uh jay my my uh cameraman my partner i said man why is i said well, nobody's paying this guy attention he's on tv like i wanted to go get a picture of this guy you know and uh jay said it's because they see you more often right you know yeah TV show last, you know, um, 12 episodes. They see you every week, all year, man. You know, and it clicked. I was like, it's true. It's because there's more community there. there. You know, they, a lot of people feel like any, anyone I watch, I feel like I know the person, you know, and that's the other thing at, at conventions. And when people see me in public, they act like they know me, you know, I, I don't know who they are, but it throws me off, but they act like they know me. So that, that is a, a huge strength for social media. And I, I wish that Elon would just buy them all up. To be honest. <laughs> totally. I'm, I'm with you. Um, he's, he's lost money on this deal. That's for sure. But yeah, you know, he's, he's at that point in his life where he doesn't care. And I think that's again, why, uh, folks like the former president that, uh, Donald Trump is, is he is more untouchable than any of those other guys. Yeah. Right? And now that he's under such persecution, Okay, and he's not perfect. He's not pure. Yeah, you know he's got he's got flaws as well. But people can relate to his his you know his situation, and I think yeah. that's why the black vote is coming his way. That's why yes. the Hispanic vote is coming his way because they see the crap that he is being put up against. They're yes. like, you know, I can relate to that. And this guy is standing up for what he believed, you know. So I mean, you have to question when you find cocaine in, in the White House. You you know all these leftists are getting caught doing all these just absolute nefarious things, and they're going after Donald Trump constantly. You have to question, you you know, any logical human beings like well something, and that's the other thing. I, I'm glad you said that though. Donald Trump is not a perfect man. Nobody's saying saying he's perfect. Are you going to vote for Joe Biden though? 
You know what I mean? That's the, the <laughs> when people are like Trump, uh, are you going to vote for Joe Biden? There's only two people on the ticket. And some people are like, you can't vote your way out in this mess. Well, you maybe, maybe you can't, you know, may, maybe it's just going to happen, but you want to slow it down at the very minimum, you know? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm with you, Jack. I'm with you hundred percent, but you know, and I think that's one of the things that I love about this, this job that I, um, have today leading this company, this emergency food company. And I tell this to a lot of people that we're actually not an emergency food company at all. We're a freedom company that happens to sell emergency food because you go back to the politicians and the, and their end game. It is about control. That's it. And the only way to break free from control is with self-reliance is with responsibility. Is with, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I think you and I, why we get along so well because we're yeah. just aligned from a value set and 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 your audience my consumer my customer uh one of the reasons that i i still do videos and i don't have the audience that you do and that's but that's not my goal that's not what i do but it's really just to to stay in touch with my community and what's on their mind and how are they feeling and and let them know that i feel the same way you know and i'm running a company and like wow okay it's just like you know you people relate to you because you relate to them. Yeah, because I'm just a normal guy. That, that's that's the thing, man, is I never wanted to uh, have a – I never thought I'd have a bunch of subscribers or even – that was never even my goal. You know, it just it just happened. A lot of people seek that out. I don't. But, you know, Nutrient Survival, the first thing I asked when – one day I called because I was like, hey, there's a, a situation coming. I think it was a hurricane. I called Becky. I said, hey – um is can you guys give me a promo code so my guys can get a discount and she's like yeah let me give me 10 minutes and i'll email it to you and then i thought like five minutes i was driving i said let me call her back you and i said this verbatim i said you you guys aren't commies are you <laughs> and she said excuse me <laughs> i said you're not communist i said because i don't want to be supporting a communist com <laughs> uh company and she said oh no 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 we're not at all we're very pro-freedom so i was like yeah but the problem is, and, and I was actually going to talk about this the other day on a video. You, you, the viewer, have no idea. If you're in the survival and preparedness, I would say 80 to 90% of those companies are leftist. I, I got into it with a company maybe a year ago, and, and they're little cronies. Dude is a leftist. They're all leftists. That's, what, that's why they hate me, because I'm, I'm not a leftist. They'll say I'm a right-wing nut job. You know, yeah, and you me both. yeah, but there it, it's full of leftists. I, I didn't know this. And I, and I didn't know whenever I started like actually giving my opinion about the, the, the state of the world, why I got so much hate, but it's because my original following followed me for survival stuff and they're mostly leftist. Uh, but it's, it's, it's part of this industry. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why if you need to be certain if, if the company you're wanting to, to purchase from if they're not talking about the complete disaster that's out your front door they're probably a leftist and they're happy that it's happening mm -hmm. and no, so i'd be totally. very careful who you support that's it that's it uh if they're not vocal they're not as pissed off <laughs> as me and eric are mm -hmm. then they're probably happiest happening i'll tell you uh i you know i i say some things and not everybody agrees in fact i just dropped a, a video um that got virtually no views because it was was banned and everything they, else. They but shot again, that thing down. It, it didn't matter it, it, and i had some of my folks as well say hey you know usually we agree on this uh, most things but I, I don't agree with you on this i'm like that's great let's talk about it right and but and i think most of the folks that are your uh in your community and that follow you and that follow me at least we're willing to have conversations again we don't have to agree on everything yeah but, but and that's that's the way it was 20 years ago man five years ago you didn't have to agree on everything now people think you have to agree on everything Look, there's plenty of conservative <coughs> conservatives that I don't like a lot of what they say. Am I going to blatantly attack them? No, you know. Now, if they show their absolute true colors that they're not a conservative, they're just you know a, a shield. Then yeah, I may say something, you know. But uh, for the most part, we're not going to agree on everything. And one thing I said in the video the other day, and it, and I was talking to the YouTuber viewer that was going to watch my video. I said, look, we don't have to agree. You don't have to like what I say but I'm not going against community guidelines. The thing is, I don't want my free speech suppressed and I don't want the leftists suppressed either. I may not agree with anything they say, 
but I don't want to suppress either. You know, I remember, you know, and you probably were told this in, in when you were uh, in the army as well. I remember uh, one of my sergeants one day said that, uh, you know, talking about somebody burning the flag, there was something happening, somebody burned the American flag. And they were like, that's free speech, man. You don't like it, but it's free speech. And that in other countries, you get your head chopped off for that. Right. And that really stuck with me forever. I don't have to agree with the leftist. I don't have to agree with everything everybody says because it's free speech. But you shouldn't hate on me for my free speech either. Right, right, right. Yeah, it always got to me too, Jack, where, but, but uh, what you said is exactly right. The reason that you're doing what you do when you're serving is so that people can have those freedoms, including yeah. and starting with free speech, so that they can burn that flag. It's just so ironic. It's one of the one of the most bizarre ironies in the entire world. You're out there defending the flag, so you won't let it touch the deck. So people you can come back and burn it. Right? Yeah, you, the, you won't let a okay. flag touch the deck. I don't know if you know this in, in the military. Like you will not let the. You know, I say deck, I mean ground. Marines yeah. call it deck. Yeah. You don't let a flag touch the ground. Like you, you will. I seen a corporal one day just get completely skinned up on ship we were it blew and and it was about to like fall and hit the the ground the colors were out there and he got skinned up on the the i forget the stuff called on the ship but it's 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 like man worse than asphalt and that dude got skinned up trying to save that fly from touching the the deck yeah. you know God i mean and, and 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 but at the same token we're defending people to burn that exactly you know exactly and that's okay that's okay. It's not okay, but that's okay. That is part of the deal. You take the good with the bad. And, you know, when you take somebody's ability to express themselves, that is the start of tyranny, 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people say that, you know, the Second Amendment's to protect the first. Okay, I get it. But it, 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 this media piece is, is so, so important. And we're just in such a dangerous spot these days because. Uh, it, a large part of the dialogue is being uh, is being squashed. Yes, uh, it's being it's being. Um, oh God, I can't think of the right word. Um, doused, you know, doused with water, whatever you want. Yeah. to call it, Right. And and that's just the beginning of something incredibly dangerous if if it allows to happen. So despite, you know, us being suppressed, despite you know, uh, us wasting time sometimes putting together, we got to do our job and we need others to do their job as well and, and, and say what is right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody said, um, is Black Scout bald? He always has a hat on. No, dude, my, I, I do videos a lot without a hat, but my hair is always like a, a disaster. So that's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have lots of hair, but I just, uh, it's always a disaster. So the, yes, it's ironic, man. And I, I, I would love for leftists to feel the same way as we do, but they, they're not going to, because it goes to the, the principle people talk about where they're like, they don't want to just live in harmony. They want to push their ideology on you. Look, I'm not trying to push my, look, I'm going to be on here talking about it. I'm not trying to force you to believe it. And look, there's days that I'm wrong. You know what I mean? we're human. We make mistakes, but I just don't think, I just don't think that they're going to grasp that, that concept, you know, and they're usually the loudest voices in the room. They're mm -hmm. usually the, 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 the ones that's posting the social media. They're, they're protesting concern. We're working jobs. We're working. We can't go out and just protest. We can't. Know. <laughs> Come on. Well, I, and there is, there's a certain, I think a certain way that folks that are confident in their beliefs can carry themselves. And you don't have to be the one shouting. You don't have to be the one, give me the microphone, right? Yeah. Listen to me. No, that's not, that's not leadership. That's insecurity in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Right. Uh, and so anyway, I, I find comfort knowing like, go ahead. Right. It, it just, yeah. It's usually like what you like the loudest guy is usually the weakest guy. You know what I mean? If you you ever been like in a bar and there's some guy that's being a loud mouth and stuff, he's the first guy to get knocked out. The first guy to get cleaned up. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I love those guys. Because yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. That, that's, yeah. that's he's the first one I've got in my eye. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Watch it. He's the first one you're gonna knock out. You know? That's it. Spotlight Ranger. 
So let's discuss the topic of the video a little bit. Okay, so obviously the world's getting bad. And a lot of people ask this question about choosing a survival property or bug out retreat. If things go bad, which they are, they, they will. It's not, it's not if, but when. You know, do you just go run out in the, in the woods with a knapsack on and survive? Mm-hmm. You know, pace planning, primary alternate contingency and emergency. Emergency should be running in the woods with a knapsack, right? The last resort. But I want to discuss a few different things that, and we can discuss this, uh, give my input, give your input on things that I will be looking for in choosing the survival property. Maybe your survival property is your home. Now, I would only bug out or leave if my house got too bad to be at, right? Like wherever I'm at, when you ask, should you stay or go? Is it more dangerous for me to stay or leave? That's always the first question, okay? And that's anything. Should I stay or should I go? What's going to keep me alive? Now, we have very different climates where we're at. It's, it was 90 degrees a day, man. It is, it's sweltering out there, you know. I but, think I'm going to go snowboarding tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this is huge, especially what whatever you're acclimated to. Climate would be my number one thing to look at because obviously you go, you, you don't want to go bug out to Antarctica, you know. But I, I think I think in addition to you know the climate piece, there's a familiarity. That's what you're speaking yeah. to. You know how to survive in the environment that you are most familiar with. Yes. Absolutely. If I put you out here in the high desert, you're probably not going to do as well as you are back in Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I think Carolina's great. Like I mean, anybody about could survive here. I think unless you're really accustomed to being cold. But, you know, I, I was trained in, in mountain survival. That was in the, in the military. That's what I trained in, mountain survival. So if you were to put me in a desert, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to know how to survive. You know what I mean? I, I've, I've been to schools in various different climates, but certain areas I mean, if I, you put me in a life raft out in the ocean, I, I'm, I may survive a little bit, but I don't know how long I'll survive. So these are all things you need to look at, you know, a lot of people don't consider this and a lot of people look for cheap land. Why wouldn't you right? cheap land, but usually typically cheap land is in <laughs> unforgiving environments. You know, I, I heard that Montana, you can buy tons of land for absolutely nothing. They have snow until June. You know what I mean? Uh, and I mean, I love Montana. I, I do, but, but a lot of people, um, look for that cheap land. Well, it's cheap for a reason, Jack. Yeah. Okay. But I think the, the, the part around uh, 100 acres of Montana for you know, $50,000 or whatever it is, um, the land is not arid. It's, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not, it's, it's, you, you can't grow things out there. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and so how are you going to survive? Sure, if you can bring buckets of water and if there's a water source, river runs through it, okay, that may change the situation a little bit. But for the most part, I mean, the East Coast, Carolinas, um, up and down, uh, you know, all the way out in the Midwest, you can grow things. Yeah. This, is, this is how we survived as, as a, you know, agricultural society back in the day. We yes. grew things. People weren't growing things out in New Mexico. They yeah. weren't growing things out in Las Vegas. You know, th- those cities exist. Those areas exist for other reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, south, Southeast, in my opinion, is probably the best. Um, you have diverse wildlife, mild winters, obviously hot summers, but you know, the, the, the wildlife is diverse and you don't have a lot of dangerous wildlife. You know, I've been in, I worked on a TV show one time as a consultant and th- this show was, was in, in the mountains, uh, on the Canadian border. And I would have to climb down into this valley where the contestants were. And this one night, they were having serious issue with bears, big bears, bothering the contestants. And so they wanted me to go down there to basically keep them safe, keep them at bay. And so it was like maybe 4 a.m. I decided, you know, everything calmed down. And it was cold. And I, and I had a hammock. Like I just, I just sucked it up. Like you, the the last thing you'll sleep in is a hammock in cold weather. 
but I put the hammock, I went to sleep and I had a radio with an earpiece in and stuff. And I'm asleep in this bear because I'm, I'm in the dark. Like they had night vision cameras around. So I had to be very careful that the night vision cameras did not pick me up. And so this bear, and I guess I put my hammock on a game trail and this bear comes and runs right into my hammock, man. You know, and I didn't have a gun either and, and knocks me out of the hammock and I, and I'm pulling my knife, you know, and I'm, <laughs> I'm slashing, at the, you know, but it, it was scared of me as much as I, I was scared of it, you know, but, uh, I mean, those things can kill you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for sure. Talking big brown bears, grizzlies, right? Yeah. 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 yeah bad bad day man you know and uh and it was during the right before hibernation and during this time they're feeding and they're very aggressive you know so so luckily he he did not try to eat me and i made it out but man i was like you guys gotta pay me way more money you know <laughs> <laughs> out there with your little buck knife come on now yeah you know they actually they called me to want me to go to africa to i was like no nah. yeah uh -huh. i'm good oh uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, not not going. I'm not dealing with lions. Right, right, right. No, no, thank <laughs> you. Unless I can carry a gun. See, the problem was I couldn't have a gun because of the the contract with their liability or what have you. And so uh, I was like, yeah, I'm not going there without a gun. Go. Or, or like a team of men with guns. You know what I mean? Yeah, or like it. Yeah. So then you have to look at natural disasters. What could you face? Droughts. You grow on something, like you said droughts totally kill your crop you know earthquakes hurricanes you know like coastal southeast man uh you know down in in charleston i lived down there for a little bit and uh man hurricane coming up, you know you don't you don't want that you know so terrible hurricanes earthquakes tornadoes these are other considerations you gotta you know think about because they could pop up any time and when a disaster strikes, the last thing you want is a natural disaster to strike at the same time. Look at Katrina. I mean, man, that Katrina should be the, the best teaching point for everyone in America. Like, you know, I guess previous to Katrina, you think, oh, you know, people, the government's going to save me. They're not. They're not. But, you know, along those lines, I'm talking about droughts and killing the crops, you obviously want terrain that um can grow crops in too you you can't grow crops you know in, in a lot of places mm -hmm. now arable land is super important for sure and i think we're talking about you know to your, your point um for most people your home is your is your yeah. best bet your castle and you know that that home you know that area better than anybody so yeah. if you don't have to leave you probably don't want to leave mm -hmm. right but if you have to leave for one reason or another if it's you're too close to an urban center and, and you're you're getting encroached upon or if yeah. you have a natural disaster and you've got to move out you know you might have to move a lot further than than what you might expect if there's a natural disaster coming because yes. you know, these things they they tend to make large swaths obviously but escape routes and that sort of thing yes um but i'm a big fan of yeah find the right place and make it your your safe haven Mm -hmm. And so it, it takes me to a place of security. How do you think about where you build, where yeah. you have your, your, your spot, right? Do you, do you, is it up on a hill or is it, you know, talk about Katrina? Well, the, a lot of those yeah. homes were built below sea level. Below. Yeah. I mean, tactically speaking, you know, this will, you want, you want high ground. Right. And, uh, but, but at what, what are you giving up for that high ground? That's also what you have to think. It takes, you know, three to four years to get crops really growing. The house I grew up in when I was uh, little, uh, my uh, great uncle built it. He built like a, he built a compound, essentially. All the relatives lived together and they had a huge field. And I'm telling you right now, man, you go throw tomatoes off your hamburger into that ground and it, it'll grow tomatoes. It's wonderful. You know what I mean? And I'm not sure you can do that anymore. <laughs> with the types of chemicals that they have now but it does take you know three to four years to grow you know I, i'm from the south man i was in the ffa future farmers of america you know agriculture is everything here so um it's it's big way of life but natural resources right water right number one you want water uh, multiple ways to get it if possible 
um, maybe a stream, if not, you know, obviously a well, you know, um, I grew up on well water. Well water is the best tasting water you can drink, I promise you. Um, a stream, you know, things like that. You, timber, wood to build things. Well, and, and timber for concealment, too. Concealment, yeah. You know, Camouflage concealment, yep. Exactly. You, you want it to be dense enough to, to make it secluded. Um, and that also brings wildlife, the water and the timber, right? Wildlife is a renewable resource. They're procreating, making more. Uh, live animals like having a refrigerator. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, not, not only harvesting off the land, that which is one of the most pure, beautiful things anyone can do. I'm not a hunter, but I have such respect for people that harvest their 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 meat off the land. My brother, my dad, and it's 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 amazing. Um, but you know, livestock. What can you yeah. what can you keep outside? It goes back to your climate piece. You know, the best places to uh, you know raise chickens is yeah. not up in Alaska. Okay. Yeah, no, no question. Um, and you know, speaking, going back to hunting and fishing, I'm a I, I hunt and fish. And I will tell you, there's been many days that I come home empty handed. Absolutely. You it's don't hard. kill something. And, and I'm talking and, and you look at native Americans with bow and arrows, I've got a high powered rifle with a very expensive scope and I've got scent blockers. I've got food plots. I've got, you know, a $500 fishing rod and reel combo, yep. you know, in, in, in a, in a hundred thousand dollar bass boat and may not catch a fish. So that's the thing. A lot of people think, well, I'll just go live with the land brother. Mm -hmm. You hadn't hunted or fished before mm -hmm. then, because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I, I've, I've came up empty as many times as I went out and, and, and came back with something. Right. Right. I used to do a lot of bass fishing tournaments. I was in a, a amateur, uh bass fishing uh tournament division and man many days i come up with zeros and, I, and I, I consider myself a good fisherman yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. so it, it, you, you can't expect to live off the land right and that's why a lot of the you know uh native peoples would would migrate because they may decimate the area which you, you don't want to do either mm -hmm. if you don't grow anything let's say your bug out location is in this area then you decimate it you know, I had a buddy, man, this guy, there was fox squirrels. I don't know if you know what that is, but they're very beautiful squirrels, right? Yeah, big tufts on their ears. Yeah, and he killed every one of them. I mean, he eradicated them from this property, you know, because he killed them all. <laughs> and uh, it's easy to do. Three hunting seasons, you can you can eradicate something, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but you can you can decimate the area so you need that renewable resource you need to be able to grow food right and a lot of people may be in a situation living in an apartment right now maybe they're in an apartment what can you do well right. you may have a balcony you can grow some stuff in pots you can stock up on nutrient survival you get a water filter identify a close water source mm -hmm. that you can go get water obviously security needs to be in your mind as well in that situation make community build build relationships with your neighbors you may be in a stronger position with the community aspect you could be in a stronger position than someone living out by themselves because you have a group of people you know people trump everything a lot of people you know uh gear can you know obviously accelerate if i give someone that knows nothing a, a big lighter and say go make a fire they can make a fire. I give that same person a bow and drill set. They're not going to be able to make a fire. So training. So someone then train, I give a bow and drill set. Uh, they can go make a fire. Right. But that community where you have multiple, uh, multiple people that may have different backgrounds is important. So those people that are living in apartments, you're living in a city somewhere. Don't think that you're just, you know, you, you, you're not going to make it because you, you can just build a community grow some potted plants on your porch, on your balcony, get some nutrient survival, you know, and, and there you go. Well, and the, so, the community piece, Jack, you, you have to be able to know these people and trust them. Yes. And yeah. vice versa. Uh, because if you're in a SHTF situation, 
you're going to be, you, you need people. You can't yeah. do it all on your own. Yes. And you, what you're talking about is, is specialization of different skills. So yeah. how do you piece that together? And that's a pretty sophisticated place to be. It, it is. It. And I've thought about this for years. And, you know, I wouldn't want 10 guys like me, to be honest. You know what I mean? I, I was, I was a, a buddy of mine. Uh, he, he's, he's a mechanic. And I was like, I would want you on my team mm -hmm. because you can fix things. I can't. Right. I might can go take out people for you. But you can fix things, man. You know what I mean? You can fix a vehicle. We're That's we're right. we're we're going somewhere. And and so when you think about like the logistics, you think about medical, you know, and these sort of things. I know I know some medical, but when you're talking about extreme cases that I'm not it's gonna be well beyond what I know, I'm not I'm not gonna be any use, right? So I'll be for use for one specific task, whereas someone else may be great at some task and you get a collection of people and that group is very strong. You don't want, you don't want 10 gun toters. You know what I mean? That's right. No, you're not. If I was to look for property, you know, 10 acres, I would say is a good start. Um, but you need to make sure is, is zoned for what you want to do. And you obviously want force. Like Eric said, you want that seclusion, right? You want to be able to farm there. And I'm not saying like a huge farm. Maybe maybe you do want a big farm. But if you do have a big farm, that's going to be a, a key indicator for someone. Because I, I promise you, in, in an SHTF situation, I will go take over a farm. <laughs> you know what I mean? A chicken farm, I'll go take it over. You got you got a bunch of refrigerated meat there. You know what I mean? Refrigerated. There you go. Keep it alive, you know. But... You, you don't want to be in a uh, – you don't want a subdivision to pop up beside you either. You know what I mean? You see the, the populace is growing. Subdivisions are popping up everywhere. Mm -hmm. My first home I bought, it was in, in the woods. Next thing I know, boom, subdivision. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what? And, and when I was buying it, the, the, the realtor's like, no, no, they're, they're not – it's not zoned to uh, be built. Like they they can't build on it. It's a it's a flood zone. No, they they they, they managed it. to build a subdivision on it. There you go. So well, I had to move. I think for most of us, um, we we aspire to have our own piece of land, our own place that we can call our our very very own. You know, it's part of the American yeah. dream, right? And and when you own your first piece of land, you own your first home. Like this is the American dream. I remember scraping together, you know, the $50,000 to buy my first home with my wife. Yeah. That was in, in Lawton, Oklahoma. And, 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 but it was, you know, it was, it was small, but it, out back we had a little plum tree. We had a place where we put a little garden and it was nothing special, but it was, it was ours and it was awesome. It was magnificent. And, you know, we just kept building on from there, right? What's what, and then we had another home and we had another home and moved here, moved there, right? That happens. But, you really feel this sense of accomplishment. And it's, it's just part of being American, I think, oh, where, no question. Where, where you can have your little house on the prairie. So even if you're not in a situation right now, you gotta be looking, you gotta be thinking about dreaming about it. Yeah. And you talked about the folks in the apartment. Well, I don't know if you wanna live in an apartment your whole life, that's fine, a lot of people do, but maybe you should you know, dream about what, what would you take? What would you, what would you like to get into? Where would you wanna you know, build? Where would you want to have your place where you could go hunting or fishing and call your own? And that's an awesome, awesome uh, uh, idea um, and yeah. something I think everybody should get behind, whether it's for bugging out or, or calling, you know, home um, one way or another. Yeah. And, and, and like you said, though, you're, you're talking about your first home with your wife and, and, and the, uh, the amount of pride you felt about that. You know, it, it's just some accomplishment, right? Um, especially people from very suffering or someone living in an apartment, you know, um, it, one benefit of living in an apartment that you don't have to cut grass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But you know, you don't want to be too far from resupply either. A lot of people they'll move, you know, hour away from civilization. Yeah, you right. may be too far from resupply it's or medical, one. medical and, and, and a normal condition situation, not a S S H T F you, you built your, your homestead somewhere, but now you're so far away that that little Jimmy gets hits a femoral artery uh, using a chainsaw, and now you know things that would would normally take you out that that would wouldn't normally take you out will take you out. You know, not 
there is company. I think this one company, I think they're they're, they're no longer in business. So because I looked recently, but they had a complete medical kit, like for off the grid people, and they had doctors on call. And man, they would tell you what to do. I think I think the company wound up getting shut down. You know, they, they don't want you to be like you said in the beginning of this video. They don't want you to be, uh, you know, uh, self reliant. They don't. The government probably took them out. To be honest with you, but at the same time, well, you don't want to be in a flood zone. You, you don't want to be too close to cities either. You know, I would say, you know, twenty to thirty minutes um, probably is a, a good. You, you don't want to be too close because you don't want to be hordes of people once shtf happens to oh man look at this look at this cabin off in the woods let's go see what they got yeah you know? <laughs> no i think i think you're right that that is what will happen you know it's hard for us to imagine those situations you, you see them in movies uh sometimes as they depict you know end of yeah. world scenario and that's what happens right once you run out of your supply in the city you've got to naturally you've got to get out you've got to go foraging you've got to be go looking for something else. And do you want to be the first place they find? Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause you know, a lot of movies, a lot of people think it was fiction. The, the thing is, is that these folks hire people. I've been hired for many things to just pick my brain. One show for uh, NBC hired me just to, they had a, a few zoom calls with me just to, for hours, just picking my brain about things because the realities of what could happen. So a lot of what you're seeing in, in, in movies are real things that could happen. So a lot of people, it's fiction, but people could be coming to escape to look for something else, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think my ideal piece would have some elevation. I think elevation has a lot of advantages, terms of security, in terms of observation, certainly for communication, you know, when you need to string an antenna, uh, you don't want to be in a, in a hollow mm -hmm. and, and be without a good form of straight line communication back and forth. Sure, there, there could be repeaters and things like that you may have to think about, but just for basic, you know, information and, and staying plugged in, some of those things are important. Concealment for me yeah. is, is important. Um, cover, you know, places for cover, of course. And I'm, I'm, probably taking it into a, a darker place than you just in terms of homesteading, but you know, no, that's, I home? mean, it's, it's a great point because you have to, and someone said, come on, Jack NBC. It was, this was like eight years ago. This, was before, <laughs> the, this was before the world went absolutely nuts guys. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, someone said books, books, books. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah. obviously there may be no internet, you know, medical books, very important, uh, identifying, various food, you know, edible, wild edibles. Huge, um, huge yeah, piece huge, of it. Yeah, huge piece is, is information. Mm -hmm. Because people get accustomed to having that cell phone there where they can just Google something. You may not have that. Think about everything you Google and you get those books. I have a ton of, back here in, in the office here, I've got a, a bookshelf full of books, you know. And, and I'm always, man, I'm, I'm a constant student. Like I'm always trying to learn more, you know. I, um, I've, I've got survival books on my bedstand and it's a little you know nighttime reading because yeah. you, you just flip through these things and oh yeah that that's how you freshen up on that skill and, and, and yeah, yeah. You think about that you know it's just it's great it's like one of these bathroom books some of these survival books right it's it's just great to go yeah, in you, for a and you have to freshen up session yeah yeah you have to and then like i do remedial no training one, i'm sorry about that go I, I was i was i was saying no one is one thing but then also putting it into practice the other day i was teaching my 13 year old, actually she's 15 year old daughter now, um, how to take some sap off a pine tree and gather lint. She likes to grab it from my belly button, but I said, no, let's, let's go, let's go, you know, let's go get it from the, the dryer, but lint with some, some sap and a magnesium rod and, and she's starting to fire. You yeah. know? And she's like, wow, What's that, Dad? You know, and it's, it's so so you got to know and you have to put it into practice and you have to teach the youngers too. No question. The experience from that too, you know, like the the lint and you know whenever you're whenever I've taught survival courses in the past, whenever you're showing people various tender, they start picking up. Oh, I can use that for tender right. because you start getting in that you know 
being able to observe and, and, and figure out what can do what, what can make good cordage, what can do this, what can do that, all, all good stuff, you know. But the remedial training, man, like you said, where you're talking about just brushing up on things is important. Like even, even to, you know, I feel like I'm a very seasoned guy. Like I could walk out in the woods with a knife and be good. Probably not even a knife. I could be good for a while. But the thing is, is that I always am refreshing my mind because you can only store so much up here. You know what I mean? And we get caught day to day and, and, and uh, doing mundane task that takes up space, you know, it takes up hard drive. Yeah. But whenever you're looking at an area, too, I would say probably a, a good thing to do is get info about the area. What's the demographic? And that should be anything that if you're just buying a home in a subdivision, you know, drive through there on, on Friday night at 5 p.m. just to see what's or I'm, eight, eight, or, 8 or 9 p.m. Make sure it's not like a, 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 a crackhead haven or something. You know, look and, and identify <clears throat> the demographics, what's going on around you and get that information because it's better to have that type of information than not, you know. Because you don't want to move into a liberal saturated area either. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it reminds me of what was happening during the, the health crisis yeah. um, where people were calling in their neighbors because they were outside without a mask on. Yeah, yeah. Right? You don't want that, man. Yeah, exactly. You know, or, and, and so this is the type of thing you need to be thinking about when you start talking about community. Um, yeah. Again, you, you can't survive alone. You might be able to survive for a while alone, but you're going to need people around you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, do, I mean, do you trust them? Somebody's got to pull fire watch. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to pull fire watch. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you can't you can't sleep with your, one eye open. You know, that's not true. So y'all got something going on right now. You want to tell them about it? Yeah, I mean, well, it, it's everything we've been talking about because, yeah. like I said, we're a freedom company first and foremost, and we believe that freedom is is one of those things that god intended uh for for everyone to enjoy and to be free from the, the burden free from the control uh to be self-reliant and so we've not you know we're putting our money where our mouth is i guess what i'm trying to say and um the team came up with this amazing idea and it was the easiest yes i ever said because it's all about how we can help folks in our community your community, my community, do what we've been talking about for the last half hour, and that's to yes. break away and to be and to be free. So we're giving away a piece of land. We're giving away a piece of freedom, uh, and one lucky winner is going to get ten thousand dollars towards any piece of land, any piece of property they want. They they that's can incredible. add on to they can add on to their existing piece. They can go get a new. Uh, new spot that's a, a dream spot or maybe a great down payment on one and uh, but it's just everything that we believe in so we, we wanted to do this uh, it's it's there's no purchase necessary uh, every entry actually every purchase does generate an entry automatically so that's that's cool and everything if, if people want to get some survival food while they're at it but no purchase is necessary we want to give away a piece of freedom to one lucky person and oh by the way we're going to stock them up with 90 days of our survival food as well amazing so, so that's cherry on who top who else is doing that who else is doing that nobody i've not heard of anybody doing that and so whenever those other survival companies y'all uh support mm -hmm. when they're not talking about what they, how they how they see america crumbling and you have nutrient survival out here trying to equip you so amazing amazing man wow. I, i'll tell you i'm really proud of the team because this this again this is like this will be awesome we've done giveaways before and they're great. They're fun. Um, I, you know, I don't think we're going to make any money on this thing, but it's just about how do we, how do we help people out? How do we pe help people achieve the yeah. American dream? How do we help people become equipped? And, and if you're not dreaming already, uh, start dreaming. Start yeah. looking around. There's a lot of places. You go to our website. Somebody said, how do, we, how do you find that more? Yeah. You go to NutrientSurvival.com. The first thing you're going to see is a, a, a banner uh, video on our homepage. Click there and, and it goes to a landing page and it tell you a little bit more about the actual promotion and you'll be inspired. You'll be amazed at some of the properties that are out there that could be yours. And you don't have to take one of these properties. There's some suggestions, but take anywhere you want, you know, go move in next to Jack, 
if you want, okay? Right? You could, you, you could use some of your neighbors. Um, but anyway, so go to Nutrient Survival. You can learn all about it. And again, every purchase is an entry. If you don't want to do that, it's cool. Just send us, send us, you know, look at the rules and send us a letter and we'll enter you that way too. Someone said here, uh, I wish I had a cabin in, in Asheville. Man, I used to go fly fit. Asheville's where I went to fly fish at. That place has turned into a liberal hellhole. <laughs> I haven't been there in a few years, man. It's bad there now. They have good beer though. Right? They do. They do. They have great beer. Yes. They do. Yeah. But uh, yeah, go check them out, man. And, yep. and uh, Eric, that's uh man. I, I can't even tell you how awesome that is. That's awesome. Thank you. So Thank uh, you. We'll, we'll put hey, Jack, I have one more thing for you. Yeah. One more thing for you. So uh, I, I asked the team right before we came on to turn on a code for you. BSS 20 black scout survival 20 BSS 20. And okay. y- you don't, you don't make any commission off us. And I think that's been well established, but BSS 20 is a discount code. That'll get you 20%, 20% Let me put that off. Up on the screen. So again, a little way to, to help out a little bit and also say thanks to you and your, your community for hanging out. Yeah, man, definitely. I appreciate it. Look, I love, look, I love, I was like, I was a customer of your food. I love it, man. You know, to, to me, nutrition is, is so important. Being physically fit, being capable, um, you know, as, as you get older as well, you know, you got to be very cognizant about what you put in your body. Um, there's so much bad stuff out there. And uh, a lot of them are just fake cal- filler calories, I call them. And uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you exist because whenever you. I need something to eat, you know, I want something that's going to be nutritious. Give me vitamins, give me protein. And, and you guys, you know, fit the bill. So I'm glad you guys exist, man. Thank you. Thank you. We got to keep that big, beautiful body of yours <laughs> running at, at top speed. So thank you. Thanks thank for being you. such a, a great partner and a patriot. Yes, sir. Well, uh, you got anything else you want to add? I'll, I'll put that link below so they can go uh, get entered into the possibility of them winning a survival uh, property and that 90 day food supply. I think that's incredible. And um, just, man, I, I hope one of my subscribers gets it. I, I, I do too. I, I, I do too. I do too. Because they're good people. Jack, me, thank you for having me this yes, afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, let me let me shout out these people. Chocolate Thunder, join the tribe. You're not alone. Yeah, join our tribe. Team Alaska, thank you. Love Billy it. Barker, thank you. Glenn, welcome to the tribe. Warlord, great food for thought. He says, thank you, man. Doug, thank you. And Johnny, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for Nutrient Survival, Eric, for being on here. And Eric, sign us off, brother. All right. Stay, was it? Stay, stay, stay strapped, stay strong, Frost. stay dangerous. <laughs> stay frosty, stay frosty. Strapped. Sorry. Frosty, <laughs> strapped, dangerous. That's, that's why it's your line, Jack. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Stay right. frosty, stay strapped, and always stay dangerous. Love Take it. Take care.